Hey guys, so today I am going to tell you about research and what I found out and the secret behind why so many cards are being banned recently. Uh, first of all, cards being banned is not good for anyone uh, except for Wizard of Coast sales. Uh, Oko, they knew that it should have been banned maybe a week after release. But in order to sell more front of the Alderaan, they continued to allow him to be played. And then he was the number one deck. Surprise, surprise. And right before Pharaoh's Beyond Death, they banned him so they could sell Pharaoh's Beyond Death. Now, in order to sell Ikoria, they made companions. As I mentioned before, the value of a companion is seven mana. And how do I get to that? Well, a companion doesn't cost anything in terms of hand size. And a companion, for instance, if you're on play, you have seven cards, a companion makes eight. How much mana does it take to draw just one random extra card? It would be two in a blue. That's typically what it is. Now, there are some black cards that are one in a black or some blue cards like the wing card that if you have a flyer in play, it only costs two, but then again, you need a flyer in play. So it's not, um, there are situations to it. That, I mean, you're either losing life or somehow you are, you need something to be checked. And even then it costs two mana, but I'm just going to say it's two in a blue because Sotomi's Whisper is two in a blue. Now, Demonic Tutor, so we can't use Vampiric because Vampiric Tutor, we actually lose life. And more importantly, not only that we lose life, but we lose one card from our hand. So Demonic Tutor, considered one of the strongest cards in the game, even today, for every format that it's playable in, EDH mainly, um, is one in a black. And that's a one-for-one one trade. The companions are not a one-for-one one trade. They're a plus one on a tutored card. Now, on top of all that, so it costs five mana, right? On top of all that, it's always in your hand to start the game or always in playable to start the game. And there's no interaction. There cannot be thought seized. It cannot be discarded. Um, there's no way to get rid of it until maybe you counter it. And even if you counter it, you're being destroyed, right? Because it's a two for one naturally. You counter it for it, you lose another card. So you got free for one, which is a very good value if you're not playing your own companion. And that's why you have to play your own companion. Otherwise, you are the value of a companion isn't necessarily in its ability. I think they made a grave mistake. It's A, in its consistency. It's always there. It's always going to be with you from the start of the game. So number one, it's very consistent. So it's better than a tutor because sometimes you don't have the tutor in your starting hand and you don't have the card that you need in your starting hand. It is possible that you then need to draw into it or it takes longer. It's plus one card advantage, which is really, really good. So it's better than the demonic. It's better than the, you know, drawing a card. And it's always there. So... When I was researching, because I, I realized this was a huge mistake. Someone, Oko was a really bad mistake. Oko warped every format. There, there have been very few cards that can do that. Um, very few. Some of you mentioned Memory Jar. Memory Jar was an emergency ban, and you get your free booster pack. But that wasn't a big deal, in my opinion, because it was emergency banned, and now everyone can trade it in for a free booster pack. When you used to be able to do that. So in my opinion, Memory Jar is not a big deal because like it was emergency banned. And that was a long time ago. Since then, we have done really good at making cards balanced and unbanned or unbannable uh, since 2017. So when I was looking at the, the graph of, you know, I have an Excel spreadsheet where I put all the listed of the bands together. And I was like, huh, something happened in 2017 since 2000, from 2000 until 2016, there wasn't that much, there wasn't that many cards being banned, and they weren't being banned in standard. If they were being banned, it was because like a shift and our new format came about, and then a lot of cards got banned with that new format. Then in 2017, 
2018, 2019 was a particularly bad year. 2020 is starting off really poor. We're not even halfway done, and we already have a bunch of bannings. And it would not surprise me if the whole companion mechanic, especially Lewis the Nightmare Cat, gets banned. Because that Nightmare Cat is ridiculous. You either play him or you lose. Or you play the hippo, which has no interaction with you at all. <laughs> It's so, uh, there's no blocking or attacking or combat tricks. It's just ramp, 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 and then you get to a point where you, you just have a giant snake hydra, and uh, it's over. So back to um, my opinion on what happened with play design. Ever since we hired these uh, bunch of um, dummies, right? And there's a bunch of them. So it's not like two people or five people. I think there's anywhere between 15 and 25 people. Now they have come and gone, come and gone. But these are supposedly people who play Magic and are going to play test the companions. But no one realized... Or actually, the better story is Oko. So Oko used to be an okay card. It wasn't too strong. It, wasn't, it was just like it would never ever be banned the way that Oko was originally designed. Then it gets handed off to play design, and they decide, oh, it's too weak. Let's make it more powerful. Wait, what a second. Wait, wait, wait. I thought play design's sole purpose, entire purpose, was to make sure cards don't get banned because they were only created and they were only paid after copycat. So their entire purpose was to make sure copycat and cards are not banned in standard again. Yet, they're the ones creating these cards to be banned in standard. So what is the solution? Get rid of play design. And save hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. I've just saved Wizards of the Coast millions of dollars. Possibly hundreds of millions, depending on you know how long play design continues to get cards banned and warps the format. I remember JC Mind Sculptor. And that was probably the most telling card ever because you either had $400 to pay for Jace or you didn't. And Jace's entire deck wasn't cheap either. It had um, the, the blue-white Colossus land, man land, and it was an expensive deck. You either played that or red deck wins. And there was no interaction. I mean, basically, Jace locked you down. Or, or you were able to do enough damage that you could finish off the opponent before it locked you down. And that wasn't a great time. And I remember energy. Energy, even though I made fun of it at the time, is more interactive than this. The whole energy counter and countering, in the, I mean, it just seemed very uh, nerdy, right? Which is fine. I think that's fine. In hindsight, energy was not the worst. Field of Dreams, I, could, I mean, I could see how that got away. Oko, I cannot, because they purposely made Oko too strong. Oko was not the Oko we know today. It was actually a much weaker Oko until it hit play design, whose, again, their entire purpose of existing is to power down cards, not power cards up. Yet they continuously power cards up. And I've mentioned before, it's so crazy to me that no one understood what a companion is. It's a tutable card that plus ones. Holy blank, that's crazy. It's a card, imagine a card that reads zero, draw a card, or zero, search your deck for any card, and then draw a card. It had a casting cost of zero, and it would always be in your starting hand, or so even be better than that. I don't know. Okay, let's say, I mean, the, the only comparison is a companion because it's so crazy that it's always in your starting hand, right? I'm trying to, like, explain it in terms of magic gameplay, how broken this mechanic is. Just even having one additional card is very broken. Having an additional card that you tutored for, that you know that your whole deck is designed to play, that's probably the most synergistic card in your entire deck, right? So if you were to tutor for a card, it, this would be it. Because your whole deck is designed around this one card. is insane. Yeah, it would be something like a uh, zero-cost demonic tutor that also drew your extra card. That 
always could be played in turn one. <laughs> Jeez, like, oh my gosh. Even but even better is you cannot interact with this card as your opponent. You can't bot seize it, you can't discard it, you can't there's no way like you can interact with it. Because if you could thought seize it, you'd be like, alright, well, that's not too bad. I, you know, ruin their plan, right? Or they have to regenerate or they have to uh dig this card from the grave again. And on top of all of this, so on top of all of this crap that I've just told you. The play design is paid hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, they're full-time salary employees, according to my research. And there's so many of them. It's not one of them, like, came up. I can understand, like, if there was one of them and they kept making a mistake. Then that would be easy to solve. We just hire someone new. But this is a whole team of them. It wasn't always this way. Standard bands are not very normal, okay? They're supposed to be rare. You don't publish a card only to ban it a few seconds later, okay? That's not how it's supposed to work. Because it's bad for morale if you made the deck and now you, your deck is down to zero because no one can play it. Like a copycat, now your copycat, oh, I'll play it in modern. Oh, it's also banned in modern. Oh, I, I paid so much money for my Okos, my special edition collector's edition Okos, and now he's gone from every format <laughs> imaginable. Banning is bad, okay? So if you accept this principle, banning is bad, then you do want to have a play design that prevents cards from being banned because then people can make decks they want to play and actually play them and not be forced. The worst case is what happened in Oko. Everyone was forced to buy four Okos and then our Okos became no, they became no value. There was no value between the Okos we were forced to buy. So your options were you have 60 days essentially to play the Oko deck or get banned or lose. So you can play Oko or lose. That's basically the options, right? Goose into Oko is really difficult unless you goose into your own Oko. And it's kind of who played first in that case. And that feels bad. So it feels bad if you don't uh, cannot afford the $25 Okos, the $100 playset Okos, and then you lose. But then it feels really bad when you go out to buy your playset of Okos for $25, $30 a piece, and then it gets banned, and now you have to make a new deck. That's what JST Mind Sculptor felt like, and I remember that very well. I didn't play during Throne of the Alderaan except online. Magic Online would refund you with, I guess, like Mythic Wild Cards, which is nice. But in real life, they didn't refund you any money. So if you paid $200 for your Okos, well, too bad on you. Right, I, in memory jar. The reason I don't care about memory jar is because we all could mail it to them, and then we get a free pack, and then some promo card. I know we got a free pack, but I know my friend um, back in this was in middle school. Yeah, middle school. No, elementary school. Uh, or just, yeah, elementary school. He was collecting all of our memory jars so he could mail them all at one time and save on the shipping. Right. Oh man, memory jar. Bye guys.